Because for me, I go, I follow college football first on Saturdays, and then I love the NFL on Sundays. Yep. But I don't check into the NBA until Christmas Day uh, to see what they're up to for the NBA Same. games. And then I don't really check back into the NBA until All-Star, NBA All-Star, because Super Bowl has passed. Same. And then from there, I follow NBA All-Star, and then I get into college basketball for March Madness. Now I can focus on baseball. Well, you're missing one very important thing. <laughs> Which one? The Masters. How could I forget about the age old tradition? You want to talk about a meditate, meditation, yeah. chill <laughs> vibe? There is nothing better than than Masters Weekend. Yo, I can only imagine, and I feel like for you, I can only imagine me watching it at home on my couch. Oh. I have a feeling you might have been there. I Indulge got to, me. I got to play. Flex. I got to play Augusta this flex, year. Flex, Rob. Flex. I got to play. You got to play Augusta. I got to play Augusta this year, what? and and. I shot an 86. Shut up. Shut up. I shot an 86 my first time at Augusta. Yo, what's up, world? It's your boy, Mike Muse. If you see, I'm coming in hot, man. There's been so much fun things that are happening off the air right now. I'm going to bring you into the purview right now. I'm just sitting here with Rob Lowe, uh, and I'm sitting here with my homie, Rob Lowe. You wonder why he's my homie? He and I actually have been to a baseball game together, the LA Dodgers. Wild. We have a very, really dear mutual friend in common um, who took me as their guest and Rob Lowe as his guest, but Rob Lowe is a guest of no one. Uh, he has his own seats and vibes behind home plate. But what's happening, Rob? It's good to see you. Good to see how you've been. Yo, I mean, we've been kicking it at the Dodgers game. Who can say well, that? The season is a brand new season. Let's go. Let's, Let's do it again. Go. Let's do another game together. I'm in. Let's have Richard do it. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do it. We'll for get sure. our guy to connect us together. Yeah. We'll all do and do the same thing. I, it was such a free out moment because Rob didn't know that we had this friend in common. I was like, you'll never guess who my best friend is. And we're going through the motions. One thing leads to another. We realize we're at a game together, right? And so yeah. you're a big baseball fan. Though. I love baseball. I love sports in general, yeah. but, and I've gone through phases in my life where I'm, I, one sport dominates the other for me. And I'm very much in a baseball uh, frame of mind right now. And I, I and I, I, I love the Dodgers. I love the the guys in the team, the management owners, and and uh, it's it's this is my favorite time of year. Dodgers is actually a fun team this year. So for me, I have become a a player, uh, a fan of players. Mm -hmm. um, so not necessarily beholden to a team. Sure, and it's allowed me to be flexible with who I can support. There was a time where I was pro Mets. I'm a Mets guy. I still love the Mets. Right, right. did things with them, loved them. Uh, definitely under the Frank Wilpon era, um, and, yeah. and then so. But when I started going to a Dodgers game, there's something about the experience of a Dodgers game, the setting, the weather, oh. the views, the fans are incredible. The stadium is such, it's such a special stadium. Traffic leaving is a freaking nightmare. That's the worst. And <laughs> I don't know. I, and I, I complain about it all the time. And everybody says there's nothing they can do about it. Mm. It really is backbreaking. Mm -hmm. But Dodger Stadium, I believe now is up there with... Uh, a Fenway, a Wrigley. F What's the third oldest stadium in the league? Yeah. It, oh, I didn't know that. They're the only two stadiums older are Fenway and Wrigley. That's it. I didn't know that. And I love Fenway. Yeah. Um, well, that's the one. Yeah. Me and the mutual friend have gone together to Fenway. Fenway is unbelievable. It's, it's insane. There's nothing like it. The green monster. I, when I, first yeah. time I went to old Yankee Stadium, I yeah. cried. Yes. The first time I went to, to Fenway, I cried. Cried. Yeah. Tell me, have you been to Camden Yards yet? I haven't. Yo, you and I've never there. been to Wrigley. Wait, what? Rob Lowe. I've never been to Wrigley. You can come with me. You'll be my guest for now. I would love that. I really have to do that. It's you got to do that, man. Let's go see my, my, my guy, Cody Bellinger. Well, let's do that. Yeah, Cody's I love, playing there now. I love Bellinger. Yeah, like, love, love good, Bellinger. He's a good, good man. I happened to be one day uh, in Baltimore for a conference, mm. and uh, where they put me up at was at the hotel directly across the street from Camden Yards. Yep. And I went there as a kid just as a tourist stop. Just mm. to, so I've always been obsessed with baseball stadiums. Yeah. And the game had to be playing, and it was a night game. I dropped my bag immediately, canceled all the plans I had with the conference programmers, ran straight, bought a ticket immediately, had crabs. I mean, it was the such iconic moment and experience what i like about baseball is it forces you to slow down now granted they've spe they've sped the game up a lot and it's made a huge difference but Which i'm been, happy about i've been to the game i went yeah. to opening night mm -hmm. it's it is a different game yeah the, because the, they're changing the ba the the distance the, the pitch clock the, the pitch clock yeah. so it's way faster there's no shift yeah so i was like why are there so many hits and I'm like, because there's no shift yeah so singles are singles it was it, it, it it's it's fantastic but 
still it's baseball mm -hmm. and it forces you to 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 enjoy it in real time i think it's a like it's almost like a meditation thing it is especially when you're there with friends mm -hmm. you get like nine and a vibe to relax it's a vibe it's, it's chill you can connect you can be outside mm -hmm. right there are obviously indoors but outside yeah you can feel it, really feel it good tradition of the seventh inning stretch That's right it's, 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 always, it's always yeah. memories when it comes to that i want to say one thing it's interesting you brought about the speed of baseball we are going to talk about the reason why you're here which is unstable on netflix which i love by the way Thank so you. don't worry Rob. oh good we're gonna, yeah, good, we're, good, we're, good. we're gonna land the plane on that yeah, one really yeah. so but i can just keep you really excited you mentioned something interesting about and i want to know if you're like me do you have the capacity to watch multiple uh, sports league at the same time, or are you singular? I can do it, for sure. Okay, because for me, I go, I follow college football first on Saturdays, and then I love the NFL on Sundays. Yep. But I don't check into the NBA until Christmas Day uh, to see what they're up to for the NBA same. games. And then I don't really check back into the NBA until All-Star, NBA All-Star, because Super Bowl has passed. Same. And then from there, I follow NBA All-Star, and then I get into college basketball for March Madness. Now I can focus on baseball. Well, you're missing one very important thing. <laughs> Which one? The Masters. How could I forget about the age old tradition? you want to talk about a meditate, meditation, yeah. chill <laughs> vibe. There is nothing better than than masters weekend yo i can only imagine and i feel like for you i can only imagine me watching it at home on my couch oh. i have a feeling you might have been there I indulge got to, me rob. i got to play flex. i got to play augusta this flex, year flex rob flex I got to play you got to play augusta i got to play augusta this year what? and and i shot an 86 shut up shut up. I shot an 86 my first time at augusta you deserve your own green jacket not a magic green jacket but you should get like a custom just a green right? jacket without maybe just a golf ball i asked them it. i said what yeah. if i were to get my own green jacket they take that yeah they have no sense of humor about it oh i can only imagine it's the mask they have a whole they have it's a very specific color that yeah. they proprietary color they know where it is they track them down online it's a it's a whole thing Rob, since we're friends now, I know I'm gonna get you for your birthday next year. Green I'm jacket, get you an olive green jacket, right? Yeah. But like some golf clubs on the side, yes, right? Yeah, like a little inside I'll joke. I'll tell my friends at Augusta, <laughs> yeah, I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I have nothing to do with this, Rob. I see why people love you. Um, you are such an easy energy. You're such an easy conversation. Oh, thank you. And you thank are you. fun. I'm thank actually you. having fun. Yeah, right. right? Now. I sure. have no questions written down. By the way, I have, it's all about energy for me. Yeah, we just do our thing. That. Yeah. And you are such a great conversation. Thank you. I see why the roles you take, people gravitate towards it. Well, thank you. And it's why I like doing my podcast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's called Literally. You can get it wherever you get your podcast, but. It's the same thing. I like I like people. Literally, Rob Lowe. It's called literally. The exclamation mark. Yes. you got to have the exclamation yeah, yeah. mark. See, I'm paying attention You know what's what. And, yeah. um, but like, you know, I'm curious. I'm interested in people. And, and it's for guys like you and me who like people and are interesting. This is, a, this is a great form. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, it's hard for me to be a guest on someone's show because I put so much work into my own show and my interviewing style is so right. different because I don't have questions because I do so much research ahead of time yeah. on my subject. And so as a result, I can take the conversation anywhere, like seemingly what we already did just right. now. Right. And so when, I, when I'm when i someone's guest, I get frustrated. I say, you haven't done the work, right? <laughs> and you're asking me every question that everyone else has asked me. Now I'm annoyed. So with you, now that you're on the other I'm side. I'm way the whole, past that. <laughs> are you past it? I'm you know, way a, a past it. A million interviews by this point. Are you over interviews? You can be honest. I'm, I wouldn't take offense to it. It's part of the job I know. The rise of podcasting um, has enabled more in-depth long form conversations and and i think that if it, those are where the good interviews are it's the quickie step and repeat interviews that are just you want to you want to murder you somebody die. you want to die yeah 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 and they have no real curiosity no. they're almost more interested in being the fan of you and being a friend that's than right they are interested in anything else uh um, here comes my quote-unquote <laughs> acting juice yeah we love some good acting Now, juice, if, if, right? if this were the 80s, it would be something other than espresso. Yeah. Okay, so audience, for those of us who are watching on YouTube who can see you actually taking the cups and this drinking This is a very it, important part of my day. Th juice? This happens immediately when I get out of the car in the mornings. Yeah. It happens again about 10 o'clock because mm -hmm. I get out of the car at like 5 in the morning oh, to early, shoot. Early riser, yeah. And then about 5 in the afternoon, it happens again. Mm -hmm. It's a double espresso Ooh. with just a dollop. Ooh. It's all about the dollop. Dollop. 
dollop. Yeah. Anything more than that is not a dollop. Yeah, it's not. And it needs to be the color of um, my dog's brown fur. That's ah, what I tell people at the wait. house. When when people go, when they say, what guys said, just make it match the, the dog. <laughs> right. Legit, I think we really might be friends because I am a coffee aficionado, so I take my coffee black, and so I'm very specific on the coffee profile, mm-hmm. right? I don't oh, yeah. put any sugar, milk, no, anything. No, I don't want any I that. take it black. And I do double espressos when I go and ask for an iced coffee. They say we don't have it. They say we'll give you cold brew. I sort of just give me death at that point. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in your cold brew. No. Because cold brew is so inconsistent. And I'm not interested in your ice cream, rich. frappuccino, whipped cream, sprinkle topped. <laughs> Go to Baskin Robbins if you want that. <laughs> Literally, you're not drinking coffee. You're it's just, coffee place. Yeah, you're drinking like a beverage. What the hell's going on? Yeah, and I take my 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 iced coffee. If they Jeez. don't have regular iced coffee, I'll do a double shot of espresso over ice because then I can control the ice to water ratio. Oh, I, yeah. When well, I'm like um like Patuxy Phil. You pull me out of the hole and I tell you if there's five more weeks of spring or winter. Oh yeah. By if I go to the iced. Uh, espresso or not? Yeah. Like if I go to the ice espresso, it's spring. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 happening. Yeah. It, the weather has changed. It's not going back. Yeah. You know. But if I'm see, I'm still hitting You're still warmth. The so mark. I feel okay. like there's unfortunately a little more cold weather to yeah to go. That's what the Patuxent. So was open day chill me. for you at the Dodgers? Was it chilly? Was it chilly was after forty nine degrees? No wonder you're still in that phase then. You're, you're and still it was there. and it was opening night, which oh, I don't oh, love. Even worse, like even worse. I don't love opening night. Yeah. I, I know that there's a reason somewhere in the league for it. I, I don't. I, I, opening day should be opening day. <laughs> I'm just saying. Should. Who knew you and I would have so many commonalities coming out of here? Aww. I think people are listening to us like, yo, they really are cool with each other. Like, no. again, about this easy vibes, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one more thing. Are you a bourbon, tequila? What's your drink? Between bourbon and tequila, what would you grab first? Well, I. I you know you know me I'm, and I know you know this but I'm I've been sober thirty. Oh, that's such a bad question. Do my no, 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 it's a good question because no. no, it's a very good question. Yeah, because I'm one of those sober people that still is all about the drink. Like okay. I'm I'm down to clown. I, yeah. I I have a gigantic wine cellar. What? Oh yeah, I I mean because I want my friends to have a good time. What? And and I enjoy people I, like I have no judgments around it at all. Because I can take my foot out my mouth now. No, no, you know you really truthfully don't. Okay. No, I actually oh think it's God. important because because like I'm good I'm good to go, okay. man. Yeah. Okay, I, good, I, good. I, I, listen, if I could still do it and, yeah. and not cause a ruckus, yeah, I would be doing it, and I wouldn't be doing bourbon. Yeah, okay. I would be doing tequila. Yeah. Yowza. Oh. I loved that's tequila. That same here. I'm a big fan. But of here's tequila. the thing. Yeah. So 33 years ago, when I stopped drinking, mm-hmm. the, the the this is how long ago it was the finest tequila you could get was Cuervo Gold. Wow, things that have was changed. <laughs> I hear like George Clooney has yeah, a tequila and a this big, one has a tequila. The Rock has a tequila? No, no that was not a thing. This is actually actually good. That, that, I, 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 I'm and, sure it's great. You know, Michael Jordan has a tequila now and I was a, I, a free, refused to drink at first, Michael Jordan's tequila because something about me, Ra, I think you're noticing a little bit of consistency. I'm a purist. Me right? too. And I'm like, celebrities need to stay out of the product game when it comes to like liquor because it's just for brand extension. Well, let me ask you this. Ask me. Would you drink a non-alcoholic beer of mine? I, non-alcoholic I, beer. I absolutely would. So fun fact about me, I was sober my entire life through college. I'm a frat boy. I went to University of Michigan. Blah, 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 I'm what? a frat boy. I rushed. What? Uh, yeah. I went to Europe during spring break in college. Why uh, were you sober through that? I, exactly. Because you know what it was? I already had a really big personality. So I was actually scared of what I would become if I was to have a drink. Wow. I would stand on a table and dance naked sober. I would do it right now. Same. Yeah. yeah. And so my concern was... What would happen if liquor got into my system and I couldn't control my already uncontrollable wow. moments to do things? And it wasn't until no lie, Rob. That's something like six, Incredible Hulk shit. It is. Wasn't about you know, literally. No, bro. It was. Right. I, people thought I was drunk all the time, and mm-hmm. it was like, no, Mike is completely sober on diet oh, coke. Oh, people right now. think I. People th- like if I go to a party and it's late yeah. at night and I'm out on the dance floor doing my thing, it's like I saw your dad, man. He was lit. Yeah. He was doing it. I'm like, nah, it's all natural. Same here. People always thought I was drunk, but I wasn't. And yeah. I didn't start drinking until about seven years ago. Uh, I would go to events and parties and galas, and I would go to wine vineyards. I think I love the scenery, right? Yeah. And 
I let my friends know I'm a good time without it. And I encourage them to drink. I would buy drinks for them to get them to start. So yeah. like, yeah, to get the party going. Holding. Don't hold, don't do it. Not, do not do it for me. So the answer to that is yes. I would. I've tried the non-alcoholic beer. There's like, good ones out there that. now. I mean, it's only getting better, like with the craft. So yes. So I'm, I'm not. So now I'm coming to your house, and so when I come to your house. I'm having your beer, non-alcoholic beer. Yep. As long as I can get a good Chablis. Oh, my wife's um, got you covered. My summer. wife Cheryl yeah. has got. I'm like, how am I the only schmuck yeah. that gets sober and is like a wine cellar that's yeah. more expensive than most people's cars? I can how did how did that happen to me? <laughs> yeah. what, what's in it for me? But I lucked up, bro. I end up having a neighbor, shout to Carrie, who is a sommelier. Ooh. Um, and so I love going to dinner with her and her husband Adam, and they just order the best. I just sit there. So here's my favorite. My wife say order and pay. My her. wife went to uh, friends having a wedding at a vineyard. And it's a fancy winery, and they're like, "I spent some money mm-hmm. on some wine." I go, "Oh, what'd you get?" Well, I don't have it. Yeah, but you just said you spent some money. Well, no, I bought futures. I said, "Wait, <laughs> you did what? This is, this is something that even I didn't. What? It's it's the ability." To buy the wine what? in the future. Shut up. And I'm like, this is Shut a, I'm up. like, this is a bridge too far. I'm, now we're doing too much now. This is too much. <laughs> Even I have a limit. Like, okay, that's enough. That could be extra. You know what I need to do? I just need to go, I think you're putting my sobriety in jeopardy. <laughs> if I do that, yeah. then I think I can get her to stand stand down. I think we might have to do that. Like if you can't buy X amount of dollars for a wine in the future. That's like, just, I was like, like something... pork bellies? Yeah, the futures? Exactly. What's going on? So I thought you were about to go to commodities and trading and futures. That's why I thought you were going with that. So you one. don't understand. Like, they only make X amount of this and they're tr- this is what they cost now and if I can get some now and I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. My wife, what is she doing? Oh, like, okay, okay, okay. So right, okay, listen, a little bit of time. We should talk about why you're here. Well, I guess we got to get mean, around to the business at hand. <laughs> if I must do my job, yes, right? Right. If I have to do my job, right. Unstable is out on Netflix, and I absolutely love it. It is my type of humor. Thank it you. is witty. It is geeky. Fun fact about me, I am an industrial engineer by degree. I did four years of nuclear chemical research. Wow. Um, and so I am a big nerd, a big techie. I have my own startup in the whole nine. And so everything in this is like my alter ego of like my life right yeah. audience they nail the satire the humor is such dry humor delivered in such a way your cfo who plays a cfo she delivers that role please tell her that i thought she delivers that role so perfectly because dry humor is hard to do yeah she's and- amazing sean and is her name and she's uh she did a show called Fleabag, which is a, a, be- a wonderfully critically acclaimed comedy, and that's where we saw her. Sean Clifford mm-hmm. is her name, and um, and yeah, we've got great characters, and even your character, Rob, because you're a char- okay. Listen, maybe I should have started this earlier. Sorry, Rob, you have to come back. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> We're still going to keep you. going, right? But like, there's so much character breakdown I want to do, but it really goes to your acting ability because audience Rob's character is very quirky. Unstable but stable, right? Spiritually deep but not spiritually deep. Smart at but all. stupid. Smart but stupid. A complete dick, but so kind. Yeah. It's hard to nail that in acting and for that to it's easy to say in words right. um, as describing your character, but to portray that character isn't easy. Thank you. Thank you. It, and it is that that dichotomy that you can be a dick and super sweet. Yeah. Like it's hard to, it's hard to write both. It's hard to play both. And, you know, John Owen, my son and I co-created the show. So we, it was like building your dream house, really. It Wait, really was. stop it. So Rob's son is in the show. I didn't know he co-created that show with you. Yes. As well. Yeah. Okay, wait. So, <laughs> so it comes, it comes yeah. out of his online trolling of me. Like he's so merciless on my – if you go to my Instagram – Rob Lowe Instagram, and scroll back, you, you'll see. I think he just hammered me yesterday. I love it. He is merciless, and I love it. It makes me laugh. Of course. And it became such a, a thing. People started catching on, and articles were written about it, and it, it got a lot of attention. And he came to me, because he's a smart little whippersnapper, and was yeah. like, Dad, I, people really like this. I wonder if there's something that we could do with it. Yeah. And so we started thinking about it, and and what we came up with was unstable. So at its core is a big element of our own yeah. relationship. I was wondering, because I knew he was just, I was wondering how much of it is based on the true dynamic. And I guess it's all, not every scene or scenario is true, but the ribbing of each other 
comes from real dynamics of you and his relationship, like when it comes to that. And the fact that you're so cool with that just lets you know this is how you really are. Well, not, not everybody could handle that type of like sarcastic behavior. I'm very sarcastic. Well, bro, have you ever, have you ever seen the Comedy Central roast they did of me? Yeah, I, they did. Bro. Yeah, but I, you know, but look, John, I, I, Rob, I don't know what's acting, what's not, what's being performative. You're a great actor. That you was, can sell it. It is. Uh, it, it, it is the roughest, toughest, but I think that's a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. To be able to take it is a total, all my heroes in the business are people with really thick skin who love it when people make fun of them and they own it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I love that kind of thing. And so the Comedy Center Rose is as rough as it gets and it's one of my favorite things I've ever done. So yeah. I'm, I'm all about it. But I'm the same way. I think I can dish it, but because I can dish it, I have to be able to take it. I yes. think it's only equal for karma. It's only fair. Right? It's only fair that, right. that I can take it. And I think people who are thick skinned are just so comfortable in themselves, yeah. right? Like I'm, I have insecurities like the rest of them, but there is a level of comfortability I have with my own agency and identity, yeah. right? And for I sure. like to be around people who have that same level of identity and agency and yep. audience I know that comes and goes for many people in different phases of your life. But for me, that is a really great symbol of that if you can take what I'm dishing and I also too can receive it back in return turn what do you hope unstable can moderate uh in society this show well it's really funny first of all yeah. i never thought i never thought that making a comedy with a capital c with actual laughs and jokes and punchlines that, that's quick and pacey and makes you feel good would be daring but here we are yes. i mean you know, the shows who are the wonderful shows like Barry. Yeah, I love Barry. Like um, Succession. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful shows, but they're not this kind of comedy. Mm -hmm. This is in the vein of Arrested Development or 30 Rock or Parks and Rec. Mm -hmm. And what I love about those shows, in addition to the type of comedy, is that you can put it on and you know you're going to feel good. Yes! it's You're just gonna feel good and that is a lost art form i swear to god this is gonna sound so full of shit and hopelessly romantic but i was watching it one day and it was in the afternoon and the sun was shining and it was early afternoon and it was coming through my window and i was just like i'm really happy right and i let the episodes play for the next one you know, netflix does it the next yep. one and the next one finally I said okay enough of rob <laughs> right like i gotta i gotta do, I gotta do something in my life but i love how you said the word daring and I think that's exactly what it is because you guys are daring a lot in so many ways. You go there, but then you bring it back, right? And yeah. what I love about this audience when you get into it, and, I, and let me ask you a question then because I'm going to editorialize but I do want to ask a question about it. I think what makes this show so special is that the timing is so well placed and it's smart yes. comedy because of the timing of the jokes and also too how restrained you guys are in some of it. Thanks. How did you guys navigate that, like, on set, right, and in script development? Well, thank you. That's a, a wonderful assessment. It makes me really happy. Um, you know, comedy is really subjective. Um, drama, you know, somebody goes, ah, and you jump, everybody's going to jump, you know. Uh, but comedy, is, there's, different, there's a thousand different flavors of comedy. So the number one thing is you have to have a team around you. Um, our co-creator, Victor Fresco, our, our staff of writers um, that all see things the same way. Um, and we do. Uh, and, you know, really having John Owen, my son, in that writer's room, policing it. Because this is our show. We It's of us. Yeah. So, and I'm doing 911 Lone Star for Fox, mm -hmm. 18 episodes. Yeah. It's a ginormous show. It's really hard to do it's a huge scope and production so i can't be as boots on the ground as i would like to be but i have john owen yeah. and he is policing every single comma oh, and know. and he and i share the same brain mm -hmm. and it, it wouldn't happen any other way there's just no way i love that 
Rob, I could talk to you all day. We had to find a way to end. I think I couldn't have thought of a better way to end with your son policing you. <laughs> yeah, it's very well said. That is goals for all of us children who have parents yeah, that's out right. there. Is one day we will be able to police them. That's I'll right. Man, I, you got to come back on the Mike Mew show. And, and we're gonna do we we're gonna that. do Dodgers. Yeah, I cannot wait for that, man. I'm so proud of you. Cheers to all the success thank you. Um, that you're having, and thank you for making my afternoons great and smiling. Man. Thanks for having me. This has been great. Yes, awesome. Audience, until next time. Peace.